Today on BRS TV Investigates, what do we really know about protein skimmers beyond them being a mechanism to create bubbles in order to remove organic waste and fish poo from our reef tanks? Can we begin to learn more about skimmers in order to make smarter decisions as to which one is better for our reef tank or how to optimize our current protein skimmer for the best performance possible? Well, today we're diving deeper one video at a time into answering those questions for good. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates, where we put popular reefing gear, theories, and methods to the test by experimenting on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And in today's experiment, we open the Pandora's skimmer box a little wider with a second round of testing skimmer airdrop performance, only this time we're switching it up a bit. While always keeping in mind that we're looking for better ways of not just tuning performance, but also selecting the right tool for the right job. Okay, I'd be willing to bet that many, if not most reefers, probably share similar experiences when choosing a protein skimmer for their tanks in that skimmer choices are usually whittled down by a handful of criteria, such as one, the skimmer has to fit my budget, two, I rely on the manufacturer's rated capacity in tank size and bio load, three, it has to fit within the dimensions of my sump and skimmer chamber, and four, Hopefully somebody else has used the skimmer on their tank and shared either their positive or negative reviews to help me make my decision. Looking at those criteria again, really only one is being driven by data, meaning that there has to be more we can learn about skimmer performance beyond tank size rating alone that can help us make more informed decisions, not only on which one to buy initially, but also how to get better performance from the protein skimmer we may already own. So I'll admit that last week when we tested air draw from the six most popular skimmers in that $150 to $250 price range, we were called out by one of our favorite reefers and sometimes sharpest critics from the YouTube reefing community, Glenn Rudolph, who mentioned that measuring skimmer air draw may have been a bit boring, and I can mostly agree, but I assured him that there is a rhyme and reason for the testing. This is exactly why today and over the course of maybe a half dozen other experiments, we plan to collect some baseline data, share our findings with the community, learn from that data to refine and evolve new tests and performance experiments in order to ultimately find a path to optimal skimmer performance and the best tools to achieve it, meaning coming up with the right tool for the right job. So today's testing is an evolution to our last test, which was based on each skimmer manufacturer's recommended operating depth. However, this week we're going to ignore those recommended depths to test the airdrop from six of the most popular skimmers in the next price bracket up of $250 to $450 at operating levels of five up to 11 inches in order to determine their optimal depth and which options have the largest installation sweet spot to learn more about the question, does skimmer operating depth really matter? Here's how this experiment went down. As I mentioned, we tested six of the most popular standard protein skimmers as voted by you guys in terms of units sold, starting alphabetically with the NIOS Quantum 120, Reef Octopus Classic 150 SSS, Reef Octopus Classic 202S, the Reef Octopus Essence S130, Red Seas RSK300, Skims SM167 Monster DC Skimmer, all from that price range bracket of $250 to $450. Using our new toy from Kelly Pneumatics, which measures volumetric airflow, we tested each skimmer's air draw when installed at depths of five, six, seven, and up to 11 inches in order to see how the water level impacted the air draw as we moved deeper and deeper. From the data we gathered today, we not only hope to chip away some of the layers of mystery surrounding protein skimmer performance and operation, but better yet, if you already own one of these skimmers or are in the market for one, this data may help to optimize that performance or help you with a selection. So with that, let's get to the numbers. To make today's data easier to digest, we're going to show you a graph of how each skimmer performed at each operating depth from five inches and beyond with some notable callouts to what we're seeing. Let's get started with the Red Sea RSK300 skimmer at 300 bucks, which utilizes a Seche PSK600 pump, which we tested at an average wattage of 29 watts with an air rated draw of 600 liters per hour and a recommended operating depth of six to eight inches. 
Right away, we see pretty stable performance from 5 inches up to 9 inches, where the overall change in average air draw ranges from 582 liters per hour at the low end to 680 at the high end, where the most air draw is right in between that recommended sweet spot of 7 inches of water. At 10 to 11 inches of operating depth, which is pretty deep and not very common in most installs, we weren't able to collect the air draw data due to the skimmer overflowing into the skimmer collection cup, which made it unusable for any reefer attempting to utilize it effectively at that depth. I'd also note that the best performance came right in that 6 to 8 inch sweet spot recommended by Red Sea, where it dropped off on either end and is exactly where I would operate this skimmer on my own system. The Reef Octopus Essence S130 is next at around $310, which has a little over a 1 inch recommended operating depth sweet spot from 7.1 inches to 8.7 inches, and comes outfitted with an Aquatrance 1800 pump that we tested at 18 watts, and is manufacturer rated for 480 liters per hour air draw. As we can see from all points of 5 inches to 9 inches, there's really not much of a change to the air draw where the lowest comes in at 365 liters per hour at 7 inches deep to the highest air draw of 395 liters per hour, just 1 inch higher in 8 inches of water. The small difference of 30 liters per hour from the lowest to the highest seems to show little concern for operating depth on this skimmer. However, at 10 to 11 inches, it did overflow the skimmer cup to a point that made it unusable at those depths. Moving on to the $450 Reef Octopus 202S skimmer, which runs the Aquatrans 3000 pump, which we tested at 23 watts, and is rated at 880 liters per hour with an operating recommended depth of less than 1 inch, between 7.9 inches to 8.7 inches. Looking at the data from a 5 inch operating depth to 11 inches, we see the largest change overall from the lowest to highest air draw happen in between 7 and 8 inches, where there's only a marginal 38 liters per hour difference from 312 at 7 inches to 350 at 8 inches. Again, the highest air draw performance is right in that recommended 8 to 9 inch operating depth, yet overall the max of around 350 liters per hour that we tested was pretty far away from Aquatrans 3000's rated 800. 80 liters per hour. I have a feeling we'll find out in future tests how much of a role a difference of over 500 liters per hour air draw affects skimmate production performance, but for now it looks like this skimmer is pretty unaffected by operating depth. Up next is the Reef Octopus Classic 150 SSS, which is the most affordable in our group of skimmers today, coming in right at about 275 bucks. The Aquatrans 2000 pump in this skimmer was tested at 17 watts and is rated for 720 liters per hour with a small operating window of less than an inch by the manufacturer from 7.9 to 8.7 inches. When we look at the performance from 5 to 11 inches, we see a very even air draw rating regardless of operating depth, where there's only a difference of 36 liters per hour from 425 at 11 inches deep versus 461 at 7 inches. From the looks of it, in this case, it seems as though the optimal range for this skimmer is somewhere in that 6 to 8 inch depth, where we see the highest amount of air draw, which is slightly lower than that recommended operating depth. Our only DC powered skimmer is the Skims SM167 Monster that's currently listed for just under $400 and utilizes Skims' own QPS 4.0 pump, which we measured at 15 watts on the highest power setting. This DC pump is rated by Skims at 900 to 1200 liters per hour of air draw and has a recommended operating depth of 7 to 9.5 inches. Looking at the data across all operating depths from 5 to 11 inches, this one is by far the most surprising results we've seen with an overall change of 1,038 liters per hour from 55 at 5 inches to 1,093 at 11 inches. At the highest pump setting, we can see that the air draw just continues to increase as the skimmer gets deeper and deeper in the water. So with skims, we see the highest performance in terms of air draw, however it is absolutely affected by operating depth, yet it does come with the feature of being able to adjust the amount of air draw due to the adjustable speed of the DC pump. I would say that even though the air draw is greater at the 11 inch depth, I would still install it within that recommended range of 7 to 9.5 inches from skims, although if necessary to install deeper, you could potentially turn down the pump speed. The next skimmer is the Nios Quantum 120 in that same $400 price range and utilizes an 8 watt Quantum 1.0 pump rated at 500 liters per hour and is recommended operating depth of just 8 inches. 
Looking at the data for this skimmer, we see a pretty stable air draw from 5 to 8 inches, with surprisingly the highest amount of air draw in that lower 5 inch operating depth at 220 liters per hour. From the 5 inch depth to that recommended 8 inch sweet spot, we see a majority of the highest air draw, and then it starts to drop off in higher operating depths until 11 inches, where we couldn't keep the cup from overflowing. From the looks of it, I'd say that this skimmer has a wider sweet spot than what's listed in the instructions, with a more usable range of around 4 inches. So much like we saw in the last skimmer air draw test, some skimmers absolutely have more air draw than others, however it looks as though these larger models with the higher wattage pumps are less susceptible to drastic changes at various operating depths versus last week's look at some smaller models, with the exception of the skims DC pump. One thing I'd also note here is that each of these skimmers we tested are commonly referred to as space saving models with their respective pumps housed inside the body. The skims DC pump did wind up drawing the most air out of the bunch today with deeper operating depths seeming better, yet it was pretty drastic swing from the low end to the high, which may be accounted for when you start to factor in the added ability to adjust the pump speeds. Perhaps the effect to changing that pump speed at various depths might be something we could explore further in future tests. To continue on that thought path of today's question, does skimmer operating depth really matter? Last week I rated this one a 5 out of 10 using a handful of smaller size skimmers where installation depth was absolutely a factor for some more so than others. So for this week, I think I'll bring this one up to a 7 out of 10 for the main reason that for a majority of the larger skimmers we tested today, we saw some of the best performance right in that operating range that manufacturers recommend. So in almost all cases, I'd say that it's best practice to follow those recommendations as closely as possible. But what about skimmer designs such as recirculating skimmers that are not as dependent on water operating depth? In the next evolution of our skimmer testing, we're going to take a closer look at how performance is affected with those recirculating skimmers that utilize a dedicated pump for the sole purpose of drawing in air and a second pump to feed water through the skimmer versus more traditional protein skimmers, much like we've already tested, that utilize a single pump to serve the dual purpose of controlling the water level as well as the air draw together. Looking back on a lot of the testing we've done over the years at BRS TV Investigates, many of our experiments in some way, shape, or form have revolved around the question, is more actually better? When it comes to the amount of flow in our tanks, it's been commonly thought that for some tank types, particularly those SPS dominant systems, in fact, yes, more is better. However, the data we found in this experiment, where we tested exactly that, showed seemingly otherwise, and you might be surprised at how we came to that conclusion, so check it out while you're here. 